Hi there! Today I am going to present you a simple but very useful lab tool that unfortunately is very underrated by many, the resistor substitution box. This is a kind of tool that is very useful when you are experimenting with a circuit and you need to try different value of resistors to fine tune the way it works. Instead of plugging in a regular resistor, you connect in its place the resistor box, then you set the switches of the box to provide at its connectors the required resistance. That way, if you are not sure what resistance you need, you can play with the switches of the device to adjust the value at will. There are several commercially available devices like this, some very cheap and some very expensive. The difference is mainly in their electrical characteristics. The cheapest ones are more suited to be used by newbies, they can work well with DC or even at low frequencies, and their internal resistors can handle a few tenths of a watt up to at most 1 watt. The more expensive ones are built to withstand the usage by professionals, often in circuits where high frequencies are at play, a higher power rating is required and a better precision. Usually, the cheapest boxes are equipped with simple slide switches to set up the required resistance value, while the most expensive ones have rotary switches, where you can actually type in the value of the resistance you need. And prices of course range from around $30 all the way up to several hundred dollars at this current time. Today, I will show you how these boxes work and a simple schematic to build one. Then, I will show you how I built my own version of the device, which, although cheap, is very functional and useful and makes a good addition to the tools of my lab. The device I built is very simple and uses a number of slide switches to put a number of resistors in series to adapt to the required value of resistance. As you can see, the schematic uses a number of switches all connected in series. In parallel to each switch, there is a resistor. When the switch is closed, the resistor is short-circuited and does not adapt any value to the output resistance. When the switch is open, the corresponding resistor is left in series with the rest of the circuit, and therefore it adds up to the final resistance. Opening multiple switches causes all the corresponding resistors to be put in series, so the final resistance provided by the device will be given by the sum of those resistors. There are seven rows of switches, one row for the single-digit resistance, one for two-digit values, one for three-digit values, and so forth. Each row has four switches, the first row with the values 1, 2, 4 and 8 ohms, the second row with the values of 10, 20, 40 and 8 ohms, and so forth all the way to the last row, with the values of 1, 2, 4 and 8 mega ohms. If all the switches are closed, the box presents a resistance of 0 ohms. If all the switches are open, all the resistors are added up and present a total resistance of 16,666,665 ohms. This way, you can set up the box to have any resistance value in between those, with a resolution of one single ohm. Isn't that cool? Here is the OpenSCAD code I used to 3D print the container itself. There are actually two parts. The first is the main part of the box with the front panel, that carries embedded into it all resistance values assigned to each switch. The second part is the cover for the box, which will be sealed to the back of the main box to close it permanently. In fact, once this box is completed, since it does not need any battery to work, it will never need to be opened again. However, in case a resistor burns out because the device is used improperly, then we would need to force the cover open to access the inside circuit. It is a matter of choices, of course. If you build something similar, you may decide to use screws to keep the cover in place, or some other mechanical mean. I just use a glue. If you like to reuse the same box I did, you are welcome to download the OpenSCAD and STL files using the link in the video description. Just for fun, here is a short video sequence showing how my box was printed.
Here is the final result right after I removed the two pieces of the box from the bed of the 3D printer. You can easily see the pins that will hold in place the slide switches. I found very cheap switches on Amazon, I bought 100 of them just for a few bucks. They are very small and fit perfectly on the spaces I created for them on the back of the box panel. After I positioned all of them, I used some glue to fix them in place, then I had to wait some time to let the glue dry. After the glue cured, I installed on the side of the box the two binding posts that allow the device to be connected to a circuit under development. Since these are resistors and they do not have a polarity, I choose binding posts of the same color, in this case blue, to signify the absence of polarity. Now I was ready for the wiring. Since I had dual throw switches, I made sure that the closet side is on the opposite side of the value of the resistor on the panel. This way, when the switch is in that position, the resistor is short-circuited and does not participate to the final resistance. When instead the switch is in the position closer to the printed value of the resistance on the panel, it is actually open and the resistance is put in series to the output of the box. I started the wiring by connecting one of the binding posts to the first switch, then I connected one by one all the switches in series, making sure to leave the last one closest to the second binding post, so I could connect it in series with that switch. You can see the final result of this stage of the wiring. Once that was done, I started adding the resistors in parallel with the switches, on the same wires used to put the switches in series with each other. I didn't bother to buy the exact resistor values that I needed, also because for some of them there is no exact commercially available resistor. So I ended up using a single resistor on some of the switches, and two of them connected in series on others, so that their series value, their sum, was equal to the value I needed for that position. And here is the final result of the resistor's placement. Before sealing the box with all the components inside, I did a quick test to make sure that all the resistors were installed with the proper value on each switch. I connected a tester set to read ohms on the binding posts of the resistor box, and then I started setting on and off each switch while verifying that the value on the tester was the correct one. I did that also by activating several switches at once to make sure that I would get the correct value or resistance in each case that was given by the sum of each resistor. I did this for all the switches until I was satisfied with the results. After completing the test, the only thing left was to place the cover on the back of the box. Here is how the finished device looks like. This project didn't take long and wasn't expensive at all. I am pretty satisfied with the final result. If you are looking for a simple project to start with, this seems to me a good one. 
I hope you enjoyed this video, if so, please do not forget to give me a thumb up and also consider subscribing to the channel, it is free and will give you the option to receive a notification every time I publish a new video. For that, to work, you will need to click the bell icon that appears after you subscribe. Thank you for following this video to the end. See you next time and as usual, happy experiments!